Greetings folks, this is going to be a quick catch up video, sort of a, a Q&A for some of the recent questions asked and to let you know what's coming up, what I've been up to. First thing, my fingers are healing very, very well. Uh, three stitches out of that one and that's pretty good. I can almost use it properly again, but it's very, very tender on there. This one, um, I actually chopped the end off, so I had to have a, what they call a VY flap, whereas they, uh, where they cut a V and then sew it back up as a Y so they can pull the skin up and recover the end of the uh, finger there where the skin was missing. Uh, it's healing very nicely, uh, but I have a nice big scar across there and raw bit on the end. It's um, still pretty tender, but uh, it's coming along very well. Uh, I have been out flying a couple of times, so it's all good. I don't think I'll be flying the Crosswind Mini for a long time, a little bit scared of that one now. There's too much trauma attached to that, post-trauma stress, I think. So we'll just leave that one alone for a little while. Uh, so first up, someone, sorry, I've forgotten names here. Someone asked, uh, how do you get the camera switching working in uh, the F411 WSE board? Uh, you need to solder on the pins for two cameras, uh, connect two cameras, they both have to be on either NTSC or PAL, both have to be the same as far as I know. One of the outputs only, only supplies 5 volts, I think, for power. The, the camera 2 only supplies 5 volts. Sort of um, aimed at powering something like a run cam, I think, or something like that. I mean, a run cam, uh, like a run cam 2 uh, HD camera. Uh, but you can do FPV cameras, of course. Then you have to go into the iNav setup to the modes page and on uh, user one you need to activate user one and uh, assign a switch to a channel select that channel in this mode for user one so you can now switch between on and off for user one by default camera one is on camera two is off when you switch it camera two is on and camera one is off that's all there is to it um, there may be some other gotchas that i'm not aware of but uh, um, that's the way I did it. Uh, just go to the Maytech website, shows you exactly how to do those uh, connections and uh, gives you all the advice you need. Uh, there's nothing else other than a dodgy board, I guess, that um, that would stop that from working. But yeah, you do need to get the uh, TV mode uh, consistent between the two cameras. Next question was about VTAL mixing. How do you do VTAL mixing? Uh, so it is exactly the same as uh, delta mixing or elevon mixing, but instead of having the aileron and the elevator, you have the elevator, elevator and the rudder operating two servos. So I'll start with a blank mix page. Uh, I would typically put ailerons on channel one, maybe on channel two, throttle on channel three, but uh, we'll put the two tail servos, left and right tail servo on channel four and five. So uh, I will add an edit line here and we'll start off with elevator insert elevator and drop it down to 50 percent now i'll copy that line just highlight it and rotate down and uh, we'll edit that and we'll make that rudder so now we have 50 percent ele elevator plus 50 percent rudder operating channel 4 now why are we going for 50%? Well if we had it at 100 uh, and we were using 100% elevator there would be no movement left for the rudder. So it's best practice to start with 50-50, add it up to 100, that means full elevator and full rudder, which is a, I mean, a, it's a very rare situation, will give you 100% movement of the uh, servo. So now we do the same thing on channel 5. Copy those two down to channel 5. And we're going to have to change the uh, direction of one of these. We, uh, I'm not too sure which one it is yet. I'll take a guess and do uh, elevator on channel 5. And we're going to have to change that to negative 50. Add a guess. Uh, of course I won't know until I actually see the control surfaces moving. But that's sort of a typical mix for VTAIL. Now if you find the one of the control surfaces is moving in the wrong direction or if they're all, all moving in the wrong direction then you need to play around with the weights, go to negative or positive uh, for each of these lines until you get it working in the correct direction. There is also, uh, create a new model, in the wizard setup there is also a VTAIL setup as well. No, no air brakes, 
uh, tile configuration so we go over to this little menu here go down to VTail and then uh, tell it which servos it's on 4 and 5 long press to confirm Sorry. let's have a look at the mix they've given us inputs as well but there you go it's the same sort of setup uh, they've just put the minus in a different spot and depending on which way your servos are mounted and what sort of servos that they are you may need to reverse all of these signs so there you go simple as that next up i'll tell you a little bit about the h wing from foxtech i still haven't managed to get it flying in wing mode yet uh, for some reason i just cannot get it to transition to wing mode flies around perfectly well in uh, hover mode or quad mode um, does everything it should do apart from wandering a little bit it's not a sort of a locked in position but I should be able to just push the A button on the controller and it'll flip into wing mode and it just won't do it um, so once again I've gone back to Foxtech shown them my videos and they said they'll get their techs onto it and try and work out what's going on um, I think this version, it's very early days for these things, and I think they're still develop, developing them as um, people get back to them with the bugs, which is a bit unfortunate. It should be ready out of the box. You put the throttle down and aileron to the right to arm it, they say, and disarm. But in mine, you put the two sticks down and in to arm and down and out to disarm. And they've never mentioned that method. Uh, of arming and disarming so uh, I suspect mine has been set up somehow differently it's uh, it's based on the PX4 which is uh, the sort of a lockdown version of Arja Pilot I suppose um, but it should be set up to work from the factory and it just isn't so I'll let you know more once they get back to me and tell me what to do they've, they've come out with uh, videos for instructions for, uh, they've come out with new firmware and new parameters for me but that hasn't fixed anything um, and I did have a problem getting the GPS to uh, lock into a home position in Australia. It uh, just wouldn't shift from China, even though I was getting um, 20 satellites from the GPS. We fixed that now with a few little tweaks, uh, but still not able to get it into wing mode. So it's an ongoing saga, that one. Now, coming up, I still am getting the Reptile Dragon version 2. Uh, the original one that was going to be sent to me got cancelled for some reason. It, uh, the shipping said it was on its way, but for some reason, for logistic reasons, they tell me, uh, it was cancelled. So I said I still am interested in looking at that one, so they're sending me another one. Uh, Tool RC uh, sending me a power supply and a charger to review as well. Um, but the exciting one really is the FR Sky Tandem X20. FR Sky are going to send me one of them for review, which I'm quite excited about. I'm a dedicated OpenTX user. Uh, I really don't want to use anything else. And uh, this is my favorite radio. The Tandem is like a super duper version of, of this, the, the QX7, same sort of form factor, but with a, a color touchscreen up the top. Still has this wonderful rotary selector, which I think is um, my favourite thing about this radio, I think. Um, it also has comes with internal dual band uh, RF module, 2.4 access and ACCST version 2, and uh, 900 megahertz uh, R9 access. Can take the light version external modules has a built-in gyro, which will be interesting. You'll be able to do something by moving the transmitter. Wireless trainer system, internal charging for 2S lithium ions. And in the HD version, uh, you, will be, you will be able to connect uh, your goggles or FPV receiver into the screen by HDMI and have your HD video on the screen, uh, which sounds pretty good. Uh, I'm not getting the HD version, that's not coming out for a few months I don't think, so I uh, won't know how well that works uh, in my version. Now although it's not OpenTX, and that's going to upset a lot of people, um, I'm interested in it. It comes with the Ethos firmware, which it, you know it's kind of like uh, the, what Flysky did with the Paladin and the um, 
firmware in that radio. It's sort of getting away from OpenTX. It's a direction they think they need to go. Uh, we'll see whether that's a good idea or not. Uh, it's an interesting idea. There are a whole stack of people who don't want to have to deal with OpenTX. I happen to absolutely love OpenTX, so uh, I'm not going to be changing from that anytime soon. But I am interested in this new uh, operating system. It does seem to be not too locked down. It has sort of free programming uh, options as well as pre-mixed programming, op programming options. Uh, but we'll just have to see when it arrives, how smooth it is, how intuitive it is, and uh, how flexible it is too. And finally, Banggood have given me some discount codes to pass on. And the deal with these is you, spend, you have to spend a certain amount of money, like $300, you get $30 off, I think something like that. Anyway, check out the, the links below if you're interested in that sort of thing. Okay, that'll do for the moment. Exciting times ahead, but I have no review products at the moment, which feels great, actually. So I'll be able to just go and have some fun flying for my own purposes. Thanks for watching. Well